Breaking news, the FBI has uncovered evidence that the Chinese hacked the RNC and the Chinese government were trying to rig the election in favor of Hillary Clinton. You're listening to We the People. This is Alan Garrett for We the People. Thanks for joining us on an unplanned Sunday edition. Yeah, the idiotic headline that I spouted at the opening speaks to our current situation. The CIA and the NSA have not found that the Chinese government was trying to influence the election for Hillary Clinton, but they have found that there is intelligence linking Russian, the Russian government with interfering with our election. Specifically, with working to secure the Trump presidency. Now, the first thing that a Trumper is going to say is that this isn't true. And that's the reason I use that Clinton-China scenario in the opening. What would Trumpers and the Republicans do in the event that Clinton had won and it was revealed that after the election that the Chinese wanted Clinton to win and the CIA and the NSA had intelligence which linked China to Clinton winning the White House. What would happen? We all know perfectly well what would happen. There would be a special hearing held immediately. A call would be made loud and clear for the Electoral College to overturn the election of Clinton, and a full and complete investigation of Clinton, her election campaign, her backers, and her family would begin. Republicans would set a forest fire that would completely decimate the Clintons, the Democratic Party, as a whole. It would be a purge worthy of Stalin, which brings us back to Trump. Why is there no special hearing going on right now? Why isn't the FBI serving warrants to seize everything related to this from Trump Tower and the fabled server, which has also been reportedly to have had connections with a major Russian bank during the campaign? Now, I'm not a conspiracy nut by any stretch, In fact, I tend to lose my mind with conspiracy garbage. The reason is simple. It's my opinion the major news media works with the powers that be to deflect our attention from the real issues of the day, dumbing us down so that we aren't paying attention. And conspiracy theories are a perfect way to do this. But we really have something to be concerned with here. And it goes deeper than Trump and Russia. It goes deep down into the corridors of power within our government. Bear with me for a moment. I want to read something to you which appeared in the Huffington Post. It was written by a former congressional analyst, a guy by the name of Mike Lofgren back in 2014. Somebody on Facebook just brought this to my attention this morning. He wrote, There is the visible government situated around the mall in Washington, and then there is another, a more shadowy, more indefinable government that is not explained in Civics 101 or observable to the tourists at the White House or the Capitol. The former is traditional Washington partisan politics, the tip of the iceberg that a public watching C-SPAN sees daily and which is theoretically controlled through elections. The subsurface part of the iceberg I shall call the deep state, which operates according to its own compass heading, regardless of who is formally in power. End quote. How does this have anything to do with the Russia-Trump issue? Simple. Even if it is true that Russia interfered with our elections to help Trump, those who say that the current real power structure in Washington thinks this is a bad thing, Look at the evidence that's real. Trump is appointing bankers to his cabinet at a rate which rivals any Democrat ever. His national security, though, it looks like a meeting of the We Love Putin fan club. 
Steve Bannon, Michael Flynn, now is picked to be Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who has been friends with Putin for more than a decade while he's worked for Exxon. I mean, suspicious much? Really? There are public record pictures of Flynn, General Flynn, sitting next to Putin at a dinner in Moscow. Rudy Giuliani has made hundreds of thousands of dollars making speeches and public appearances in Russia. Let's not forget that Donald Trump has gone on and on and on about what a great man Putin is. Hey, Alex Jones, you listening, buddy? Forget those lizard people. We got a real story right here that you're not even paying attention to. But no one wants to talk about it, do they? Anyone in Washington with an R next to their name avoids this issue, or they outright deny that it's even remotely possible. Hell, the other day, Sean Spicer on of the RNC nearly blew a gasket on CNN when he was getting drilled by Smirconish. But maybe the reason no one is making hay out of this on the Republican side is not only do they not worry about it, they don't care, which goes back to the deep state Lofgren spoke of. Let's assume there is a conspiracy here, a real one, but not one of Russian influence. That the deep state exists. It isn't Republican or Democrat. It's green. Money. Let's assume that our country is no longer a democracy. That a silent coup took place somewhere over the last 50 or 100 years and the government we see isn't the government that rules us. Let's assume that the banks and the corporations rule this mess and that they are really in charge. Let's make that assumption. What can we do? We can resist. We can fight back. Refuse to obey. Stand up. March. Protest. And be as loud as humanly possible. We will face water cannons in the streets. They will beat some of us with batons. And some of us might actually face real bullets. I'm certainly not calling for open warfare in the streets to overthrow the government. I'm simply saying that when the powers that be begin to lose that power, their first reaction is to lash out in violence. All you need to do is look back to the 1920s and 30s during the Union strikes or the 1960s during the Civil Rights Movement, and you can see exactly what I mean. But our forefathers waged a revolution against an oppressive government once before. So it's possible for us to wage another revolution, a nonviolent direct action resistance. We can go on strike. We can protest. We can march. We can make it about everything that bothers us, everything that causes us ill. Climate change. A minimum wage fair working conditions, fair pay for women. We can make it about those things that we all want. Not just Democrat, not just Republican. The things that we all want. The ability to live our lives in peace, to provide for our children, and to have a future in a democracy where our vote counts and our vote means something where politicians in our government don't work for someone who writes them a check. They work for the people who vote for them. Wake up, America. This country is yours. Even if it's true that we have no say in our government, it's up to you to get it back. Fight back. Become the resistance. If you have something to say to me, you can email me directly at w. TPAmerica at hotmail.com. Or you can leave a post below, but it's unlikely I'll see it. You can join us over at the blog at WTPAmerica.org. And please take the time to go to our Patreon page, www.patreon.com forward slash WTPAmerica. This is Alan Garrett, and you've been listening to We the People. Stand up. Resist.